the Last Supper. This is the Garden of Gethsemane. Felix Lucero is a good example, as there is, of a man who gave back to life more than it gave to him, and he performed quite extraordinary deeds under quite extraordinary circumstances. Felix Lucero was a Native American from Trinidad, Colorado. As a young man, Felix was drafted into the U.S. Army and found himself fighting in the trenches of France in World War I. After one of many battles, young Felix lay bleeding among the many dead and wounded who had been abandoned and left to die on a nameless, muddy battlefield that had fallen silent. Felix was critically injured and alone with his dying comrades. He was scared. In his physical pain and mental anguish, Felix prayed to God to spare him, and he promised his creator that if he lived, he would commit his life to sculpting statues of Jesus Christ. God answered his prayers. Felix was rescued, recovered, and returned to America. After returning back to America, it was 20 years later before Lacerra finally started to make good on his promise. He did find himself on hard times in Tucson when he was living in his cardboard and plywood shack. So that's when he began sculpting Christian statues, molded from damp sand, reinforced with debris, recovered from the Santa Cruz Riverbed. With no formal training, Felix began to fulfill his promise to God. During the Depression, Felix Lucero drifted and finally settled in Tucson, Arizona in 1938. He was homeless and lived in a cardboard shack he constructed beneath the Congress Street Bridge that crosses the Santa Cruz River. Anyone who travels on I-10 through Tucson crosses that bridge. Few of you, however, know about the Garden of Gethsemane that says beautifully simply and solemnly at the foot of the northwest corner of the bridge hidden in a beautiful grove of trees. During Tucson's monsoon season in late summer, the Santa Cruz can turn into a raging torrent of water that carries a large amount of trash and debris that is left behind when the water quickly recedes. Felix Lucero collected this debris to build his hovel under the bridge, and he hauled sand from the river to create his magnificent sculptures. He dragged up bed springs that provide the interior support for the table in his Last Supper sculpture. His original works were created with sand and plaster, but later were replaced with concrete to battle the elements. Felix simply created his work on the banks of the river next to his home for the homeless. But his work soon began attracting attention, and the site became a spot where pilgrims would come to pray and meditate. His work at Tucson's Garden of Gethsemane was a lifelong work in progress. Following his death, the Knights of Columbus and later the city of Tucson have preserved the site 
and turned it into a park. If you ever pass through Tucson, I encourage you to visit this park. From I-10, exit at Congress Avenue and go west. The park is immediately on your right, hidden in a beautiful grove of trees. Felix Lacero died when he was 56 years old. He died a hero because he gave back to life more than life gave to him, and he fulfilled the most important commitment he could ever make the commitment he made to God. The statues have been rescued many times and have been moved and they've been frequently repaired due to vandalism. In one incident, a total decapitation of the entire Last Supper. They now stand here in a gated in a nice park they've been moved here this is close to where lucero lived so there are still a lot of homeless people around here when i got here i parked i was the only one here and i went in to look and lo and behold there was somebody standing right over here in that circle there and he was just staring at my minivan which is right there so it's totally enclosed in there. So I walked back out and I just looked at him and I just looked at him and said, hello. And uh, he said something in some not Spanish, but some other foreign language. He had a rap on it. Yeah, some foreign language. And um, he didn't look friendly. So I just stood over there and I started talking on my phone. And um, maybe he assumed I was calling the police. I don't know. But he left. But then I went in there to film. And then he stood right there. And so I came back out. I don't know where he is right now. But otherwise, I would have spoken in there. But we did get footage of it. So, yeah. So there's a lot of homeless people. And they're all more coming in. In Tucson. Yeah. And they're in bringing in a lot of immigrants. Which is cool. But, uh, yeah. So I'm just looking around here. Waiting for him to, like, appear. I don't know where he is. He has a back. You can tell he's homeless. So, yeah, I can understand that a lot of homeless people might want to hang out here and sleep in here and, you know, during the day. Looks like a nice place to hang out, doesn't it? It was gorgeous. Tucson has so many interesting places, which is surprises me that a lot of people that I've met and become friends with they don't really come here with me, <laughs> you know? They uh, they might go to Yuma or they might visit here and there, but they don't really um, hang out in Tucson. I love Tucson. Anybody that wanted would, would have wanted to come to Tucson with me and hang out, but uh, they didn't, so yeah. But there's a lot of interesting places and I'm going to um, visit a few more for y'all and let you see some of the interesting things around here. There he is, there he is. Felix Lucero, World War I veteran, slept under a bridge. Finally, he got started on his promise. God is good. Last Supper. I've never been to BLM land uh, while in Tucson but I think I'll go visit it and see what's going on there. Here's a close up of the details of the Last Supper statues.
one thing I like about visiting Tucson, for me is of course it's familiar. And while I wanted to finish up a project, I didn't want to be in unfamiliar uh, uh, a location so I could focus, 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 focus. But one thing I do like about it is a lot of shade. You know, you can park in the shade during the day, go to parks. Most parks have shady areas to park. And then at night, you know, you can drive to your uh, parking location. Now, everything isn't in one perfect package for me. I have areas that I like. Uh, the park that I like is a little bit further than the actual place that I park. So I do use more fuel here in the city than what I do boondocking. When I was in Quartzsite, I mean, there were three or four days I didn't drive at all. But in, in here in the city, I'm driving every day, back and forth and going places, um, shopping, seeing sights. Yeah. And gas is up right now. I think here in Tucson right now is uh, 298. If you are from the future and watching this, this is the last part of March, Tucson, Arizona. 2021 yes and the gas is two dollars and 98 cents here it's different all over the nation somebody had asked me about my fuel how much fuel do I use as a nomad well I don't know the actual gallons that I use I only record what I've spent it would be better to you know like to go with the gallons because gas prices fluctuate right but i did an average over the past year 12 months i did 12 months i spent an average of a hundred dollars a month that's not bad some months are more than others probably you know i spent more when i was driving up to quartzsite and then i spent more driving back down here now i did not include driving across the country that was almost two years ago so I looked during that month and going across the country it was three hundred dollars roughly approximately so and I'll be spending that again next month as I go back over to Ohio but that's still not bad I mean if you consider um, what people spend on rent yeah I mean there's other expenses with our vehicles we have insurance I triple a uh, yeah so if I spend $100 on fuel, maintenance hasn't been too bad this year. Let's just say maybe I spent maybe another $30 on maintenance a month. Uh, let's just guess. So it's $130 plus $90 for insurance. I have full coverage. $90, $130, that's $220. And then triple A a year. Oh, that maybe that's like ten dollars. Maybe oh, well, maybe about fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. So two thirty, two forty. So two fifty a month in just car expense, which is my house. So that's like my rent. So that's um, the skinny on the fuel, what I spend, and my budget for that area. Look at that beautiful face. Oh, it's the dog and the bunny. Those belong to my daughter. I had to go pick up a package. Uh, the bunny is actually potty trained um it's housebroken it goes either through the doggy door to go to the bathroom or it they have a uh, a litter box for it and it goes in the litter box so <laughs> it's really a, a cute rabbit and then rupert the dog oh my gosh that dog is gorgeous look at that did you see the face on that dog <laughs> what a face uh, a face to love yes what a cute dog, Rupert. 
See, I wouldn't mind having a dog like Rupert. He doesn't look like a dog that would shed. He's so cute. And he's so mild-mannered. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Garden of Gethsemane. I was a little um, off balance because right when I got there, um, that homeless guy put me off balance. Yeah, I couldn't really relax very well while I was there because when you walk in, you're kind of like in there and there's no way out except the, the one door that you go in. And he just was staring at my minivan. He was just staring. I could see him through the bars. I go, ooh, who's he? Oh my gosh. So that's when I went out and I wanted to check him out and I just sort of looked at him. I did say something to him. I said, hello. And he looked at me and uh, then he stared at me and my van. But anyway, so that's why that um, segment is a little bit more serious because I was a little bit um, um, off balance. Then when I was leaving, another homeless guy came in. He was going in. So it must be a popular spot for homeless people. Although the other one, he, he seemed friendly. A lot of homeless people here in Tucson, they're very friendly. Um, the first one, he looked like maybe he was sort of a, um, he was immigrated in here. It wasn't Spanish. It didn't seem Arabic either. So I don't know what the language was that he was saying. I don't know, but yeah. Another homeless. You can tell by they have all their belongings on their back. Yeah. Now in Reno, a lot of the homeless, they had vehicles, um, ill running vehicles. Yeah. But uh, here, a lot of them are on foot with, their, with everything they own on their back. Well, I'm done for the day and I'm gonna go um, walk around a little bit more. Then I'm gonna go slack line and yeah, do some stretching. I joined Planet Fitness again. This morning I was there, got myself a shower. They don't require a mask anymore. They're optional. And everything's open. They're open 24 seven. Um, water fountains are open, showers are open, everything. Uh, the massage uh, beds, the hydro beds are open, so. <laughs> okay.